Another excessively hot day here in the Houston area. Car is jacked up a little bit and we have a timing light down here and I'll explain why in just a minute. So talking about timing lights, we want to set the car's static timing so we know we can keep kind of mega squared on it. So something called a tooth offset. So when you have a trigger wheel installed, you have a sensor, which you can't really see mine because of the ridiculous lighting conditions. And there's a missing tooth, and it has to know, okay, I see the missing tooth. Now, uh, where is top dead center with respect to that missing tooth? So you kind of roughly set it just by counting the teeth, man. You're like, okay, there's this many teeth between the sensor and the missing tooth. But to really dial it in, what you need to do, you need to use a timing light. So I've got this here. I went to Sears. This was like 80 bucks or something on sale. I think it's normally somewhere near 100. So I have it, well, not hooked up, but you just go to the battery. Just simple, just to, you know, add length to it. But normally these uh, clip your battery and then just watch the YouTube videos on how to use a timing light. It goes to the number one spark plug lead. So this just kind of gives us a RPM signal and you can choose advanced. This one is digital. And you can set, you know, degrees advance or retard, so you can verify your timing. You make sure that it's not something ridiculous that will kill your engine as soon as you start getting on it. So, the reason this is all down here is because I am just kind of a lazy guy, and I've got a mirror <laughs> propped up by a few bricks, and I'll try and explain... Well, you can't really see very well, but there's a timing mark on the bottom of the bell housing, and a little, like, you know, window for it, which I think is a lot easier than trying to read the silly OT mark up here. Mine is barely legible to begin with, so I thought, hey, I'll try this. I'll jack the car up, and I'll put a mirror under there, and I'll just point the trigger, uh, the trigger light at it, and, of course, it'll be mirrored, so I'll have to, like, you know, instead of going up, I'll actually be going down with timing, according, you know, just from looking at it anyway. So that's the setup. So I'm going to pause the video, start the engine, and we'll see if we can pick anything up. All right, so I have this one cell set as an integer, 11 degrees of advance. So actually, I'm going to make all of these cells 11 degrees advance so that it's forced to run at 11 degrees, which should be fine because that's like what it's idling at now, and it's idling pretty awesomely. So set valves equal to 11, OK burn, it's going to cut the spark, and then it comes back, and look, rattling it right at 11 degrees. So when I go back, this is my other gauge cluster, let's go to the main dashboard. So it says we're pulling exactly 11 degrees of timing. You don't want this to be walking around, because when you set the timing, you, you want to make sure that it's right on the money. Oop. So, I'm going to kind of try and get some shade, but right now I have this set to i will set it to 11 degrees of advance, and we're going to look at that mark on the flywheel and see if it's where it should be, which uh, it should be in the TDC window. So let's have a look. And I apologize if you can't see the mark. I'm going to try my best, but this is the first time I've actually done it. So uh, I'm going to be kind of paying attention to it and trying to manage the, the video. That's how it should look when the ignition is set properly.